Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. So who do we have here? Well, oh, we have Chia. <laughs> Ria is here. Well, you're supposed to be sleeping, aren't you? So you decided to stay up for a bit. I know it's about like 4.30 in the morning there. So perhaps you can join us at 9 o'clock tonight, which is about, what, eight hours from now? I'll have another one, hopefully. And so that would be geared for the Asia, Australia and Asia, and of course, Philippines and so on. So that could be better for Iria. Maybe you go to sleep now. <laughs> this is going to be another couple of hours at least here, so you'll be deprived from your sleeping. Sleeping cycle is very important for all your health, everyone. So make sure you sleep, you know, not too late and then wake up um, sometime before 9 or 10 so you can get some sunshine. Those photons will go in through your eyes and through your eyes your system gets uh, signals that it needs to receive to start doing all the regularities and the production of the hormones and so on that you need. So sleeping cycle is very important and remember that. Uh, Emmanuel is here, says, hello, Mary. Hello, Emmanuel, Mail 28, Boston. Thank you for that. And Ria, we have a protocol that everybody who is joining us in the um, live chat, uh, we need to know a little bit about them, such as what Emmanuel has done. M for male, 28, his age, and Boston is where he is watching the video from. So three things like that. So yours would be like F for female, and the age, and then Philippines. And Slobodan says, hi, Mehran, 21 Belegrad. Thank you very much. Mail 21 Belegrad. Emmanuel says, one of three. Okay, we've got a book coming, guys. Strap on. Just double check here. I'm expecting a phone call. So I will disappear once that comes for about two, three minutes. <clears throat> so until then, we're here. So Emmanuel says, is it a bad thing to have too many hobbies? For example, I like theology, the psyche, metaphysics, tanks, piano music, flamenco, meditation music, Japanese music, tourism, hiking, archaeology, and maybe a few more. I feel like I shouldn't be like this because I'll never focus in one. To some extent, I envy those who were born to do only one specific thing in their life, like Einstein, Mozart, George Washington, and Thomas Edison. Well, look, uh, you are forgetting the contest that you, you put this in. You said, is it bad to have too many hobbies? Well, you call them hobbies. Well, you don't treat them as hobbies. You think they're supposed to be the one thing, every one of them is supposed to be the one thing that you should be focusing on or you would want to focus on, like Mozart on his music or Einstein or so on. But these are hobbies. You can have as many as you want. Through their lives, these people that you named and many others have had many different interests. And then among those interests, eventually they decided that, hey, I want to focus on this. Like when you're a kid and you play many sports, maybe tennis, maybe soccer, maybe basketball, maybe volleyball, maybe swimming, maybe running. But eventually throughout your high school years or college, you figure out there's one of them or two of them that you like more than the other. Then you'll start focusing on that. So having so many interests is very good. There's nothing wrong with it. In, have, in fact, you have so many hopes and so many ways to spend your time positively. So having all these um, hobbies is perfectly good and very good. And it inspires you in many different ways. And then you'll have so many other 
ways to be hopeful and happy in life because you have so many entertainments that you have created that are of your interest. So um, whenever you come up to something that you feel I want to spend more time on it, you will, just like you do now. Some of the hobbies you like more or you have more opportunities to attend to, so you will and you will go deeper into it and search, research more into it and you'll find more interest in that particular hobby. So there's nothing bad about it. Just enjoy but don't treat each one of them that you got to be the best at it. Just enjoy, and then one or two of them you really want to know a lot more about. That's good enough. So what's going on with us? We only have, what, two, three people here. Ria says, hello, I'm here, 5.15 a.m., haven't slept yet. Yeah, I talked to you first uh, right up when I saw your name. I said maybe you should go sleep because you want to make sure that your sleeping cycle is organized because when you sleep not too late and wake up about 9 or 10 and to be able to see the sunlight or the daylight so the photons will come inside your body through your eyes, receptors that you have in your eyes and then your whole system and hormonal system and everything starts regulating and functioning because of the signals that you receive from sunlight, which is supposed to be before 10 o'clock, or at least, you know, the latest before noon. Uh, but uh, right now, so it could be very late for you. You can sleep on, we have another one in eight hours at 9 p.m. Vancouver time, 9 p.m. Vancouver time, and um, maybe 8.30, I'm not sure. And then you can join us there, so you can go sleep now. Ria. And... Prane says, hey, Mehran, 17 male India. I had a quite huge trigger today. I went to play football with my friends, had many triggers, but got through them as I reached home. It sounds weird, but I got such bad, the rest is not here. Okay, so we have 15 people here, but are you guys scared to come in? The water is safe, no sharks in it, so come on in and join us and make a comment on topics that you might be interested in, which could be breakups, your relationships, uh, emotional hardship, or it could be things about thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, mechanical process, material process, order in life could be about OCD, HOCD, or some other substance, of course, the OCD in general, and we can discuss what's concerning you as much as we can here. And you all know that I have a site called mindthatseekstruth.com. Mindthatseekstruth.com. You can go on it. You can see what uh, things are available. You can take a look at the table of contents of the books that I've written, and you can maybe get the one in the form of print, which is more expensive, and we have a little backlog on it right now. I still have to ship some to UK, and we are behind. But uh, the the uh, ebook version is right away, and it's one tenth of a price. And you're more than welcome to get those and see what other services include. And if you guys wanted to talk to me one on one to discuss what's concerning you, well, you can do that through my site through Skype consultation. Click on the Skype consultation and figure out the package and what's uh, workable for you. And uh, then we'll hash out the exact time and date on a Skype uh, text. And we will uh, have our discussion one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. And we have here, Prani says, I had uh, such a bad, so I won't ask for any reassurance. You had such a bad what? But I got such bad what? It doesn't continue. Prane. Says just one th thing, the thought which create vibes or feelings, I want to discard them, and I do, but they circulate around an activity that I do or sense of touch. Look, I, 
Prenny, were you absent with all these talks that we've had so far and these live talks and the videos that I've made in regards to OCD, HOCD and how they operate, how the brain functions and malfunctions? You weren't. So what you're doing right now is like you've forgotten everything that we've talked about on this subject and you're coming up as if this thing that you're talking about is new. You know what it is. It's called OCD. It's thought. It's got no reality. It's illusion. It's like the SSS. It's like the stuck sound syndrome. When you hear a tune or a jingle in your head all the time, but there are no musicians playing, there's no video playing, there's no music on the radio, there's nothing playing, but you keep hearing it. That's because there's a loop. There's a malfunction in the signaling system that keeps that loop not being shut down and in forms of thoughts and intrusive thoughts, as you know, caught it nucleus part of basal ganglia in the striatum in the midbrain is responsible to shut down intrusive thoughts automatically. But when it malfunctions, the thoughts hover and they don't get the signal to, we're not interested in this topic, shut down. So they hover. Prefrontal cortex keeps sending these thoughts back and doesn't get a signal to say, hey, you're not interested, and we'll shut you down. Caudid nucleus goes malfunction once in a while, and when it does, your behavior toward these thoughts, which would be ignoring and dissing, recognizing them for what they are, calling them for what they are. Ah, that's intrusive thought. It's not me. Ah, that's my brain. It's not me. Hey, that's OCD. It's not me. That's HOCD. It's not me. You call it for what it is, and then you say, hmm, I know you're here, but I'm not interested, and you focus on what it is that you're supposed to be accomplishing that day, which apparently you did through your practices, and through your exercise or sport activity that you had, which is very good. The rest of it, keep ignoring. <clears throat> you think if you ignore it once, it should go away and never come back. No, we're all human beings, and our brain was given to us 40,000 years ago but we were living a million years before that. So the brain is far younger than what our essence of life is. The way that we have been living has been instinctive just through the uh, you know, stem brain and we, was all, we were just like animals. Everything was hardwired, everything was clear, no questions, no confusions. Why? Because, okay, just one moment, guys. I got to take this call. I'll be right back. Hello, Dr. All right, we're back. <clears throat> so as I was talking about uh, your situation is that you you recognize what they are, you then, after you recognize them, call them for what they are, you ignore them and go about your business. But you think if you do that once, that should take care of the business. No. 
you are doing the job of caught a nucleus, which is supposed to be that automatic gear shift to shut the intrusive thoughts down. For that, you're trying to rewire your brain. For rewiring your brain, you need to have repetitious. Just like when you learn how to play piano and become good at it, you're supposed to play a lot. Because it, the more you play, the more synaptic neurons create the bridges between the two ends of the synaptic neurons to allow the neurotransmitters to pass on the information of this ability that you're practicing on, and you become good at it. So you got to do a lot of it in order to create enough synaptic neurons and through neuroplasticity to create that new conditioning, new rewiring. So you will automatically play a good piano. Now, when you don't play, just, just as we have the ability to learn things, we also have the ability to unlearn things. So when you don't play piano for a while, then the synaptic neurons fall dormant and they're not being used. And your system recognizes that these synaptic neurons are not being used and says, listen, I have only so many that I want to use. So if you're not using these, I'm going to destroy these bridges and make them fresh so the synaptic neurons would be ready to create bridges for becoming good at something else. Not the piano, because you're not playing piano. That's why when you don't play something, you don't do something that you used to be very good at, you won't end up being as good as you used to be when you were playing a lot of it. Tennis, soccer, uh, I don't know, guitar, piano, whatnot. Because what happens is when you sleep, brain shrinks about 60% and there would be enough room for scavengers to find out where are these bridges that are not being used, these synaptic neurons that are not being used. So they're going to be marked them. Glial cells are going to mark them with the protein called CQ1. And then at night when you sleep, microglial cells go and find those marked um, uh, neurons, uh, synaptic neuron bridges with, the, with that protein, and they destroy them because they are being told that these are marked for you to destroy them because we want to use them for something else. We are not using them for what we have been using them for. So in that way, you unlearn the bad habits, and then you learn new habits through repetition and neuroplasticity. You rewire your brain. Right now, through repetition of this behavior of yours, the way you look at these thoughts, you will rewire your brain not to make these thoughts so often. And eventually, through time, it will learn that decision of yours and complies. Until then, the brain is acting like an idiot because its brain is stupid. Despite of what we've been duped to think that brain is intelligent, brain is one of the most stupid places in our body because it actually doesn't know anything. It guesses things. It has no knowledge of really who you are, what you are, it is a machine to make thoughts. So it makes thoughts based on what it thinks it should do and based on the fact that it's designed to protect you. So what kind of thought is something that is supposed to protect you is going to do? It's going to make negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts, because that's the only way it can be into that zone of protection. If you're hired to protect a mansion or some people, what are you constantly thinking? about dangers, about negative things. So you watch there, you watch there, something coming from there, an attack there. So you constantly are in that mode. You put yourself in that mode to become a better protector. Brain is designed to protect us. So it's constantly, forever is in the negative mode. So it comes up with all kind of nonsense. It comes up with all kind of negative thoughts. It comes up with all hopeless thoughts. It comes up with all kind of dangers including attacking or suggesting your gender is not the same as it's always been or what you prefer it to be. It, it constantly thinks that it's trying to protect you, so it comes up with all these cockamania ideas, make up things that you're not the gender you've always been, you're changing, you're interested in this same sex, um, uh, same um, agenda, which you are not. And if you are, it will make you think that you're not interested in that, whatever you're interested in, and you're interested in something else. Whatever your gender is, it's going to make you think you're not that. And it's going to attack you, suggesting 
that you're interested in something different, that you have been living in denial. That's the way the brain works. And that's why I say it's still work in process and it needs lots of work. We are a few million years old and the brain is only 40,000 years old. 75,000 years ago, the brain started showing some promises, but again, it died down. And 40,000 years ago seems to be the record on hand that it started becoming the way it is. So we're new and we are prone to malfunctioning and that's what's happening when you guys notice all these HOCDs, pedophile OCD, religious OCD, all these OCD subsets. It's all part of that whole process and deficiency. So, all right, let's see who we have here. So uh, I guess bottom line for that is let them be. Just don't pay attention to them. There's so many things available in this world, but you don't pay attention to them. If you want to go do something outside, there's so many things in your way and so many other people are doing different things. So many products being offered, sold, advertised, all kinds of different things are available, technologies, uh, attires, clothing, uh, fashion or lifestyles, all kind of things you will witness while you're going from one place to another place to do whatever it is that you're set out to accomplish on that day. But you don't pay attention to all these other things, right? Because you're not interested. You focus on your own thing. Same thing. Brain is also creating all these things that are not interesting to you, just like you're walking in the outside world and you see so many things you're not interested in, so you just Find what you're interested in and focus on that. Brain also produces all these things, a lot more than the outside world in the real uh, physical sense, creates all these intrusive, non-interesting, meaningless things to you because that's what it does. And you're supposed to treat them exactly like you treat the outside distractions and things that you're not interested in. Just walk by them and don't pay attention to them. That's what you do. What do you do? If you're a lady and you're walking in the street and you'll see somebody is constantly trying to pick you up or chat you up, you ignore, right? You ignore and keep going until it falls, falls, falls away, that that person stops following you, right? And if you are a man and somebody is trying to, I don't know, uh, say, hey, you want to buy this, you know, join our club or <clears throat> be, um, you know, get a membership or whatever, it keeps following you. What do you do? You keep going until that person gets tired and stops trying to keep talking about that, whatever opportunity or thing he wants to sell. Same thing. Brain keeps suggesting things. Just treat it like a stranger, a crazy person. You just keep walking and get a distance, mental distance. By how? By focusing on what it is that you're trying to set out, you've set out to accomplish. And in that way, it keeps getting, registering that, hey, this person is not interested in the nonsense that I'm suggesting. So that means I got to find <clears throat> something else that he may engage and Use it so I will feel useful, the brain thought things. Okay, there's a lot more into that, but I guess uh, we don't want to take, uh, turn it into a, a, a private session. So <laughs> we'll go on um, to the next question. Johnny says, hey, Mehran, my sister is 29 and living in Chicago. Uh, for two years, but now she says she becomes depressed, she became depressed and wants to come back to Florida to be close to family, while all of a sudden did she become depressed 
Why? Oh, why all of a sudden she became depressed? Uh, why all of a sudden? She, well, uh, that's a good question, but uh, I don't have any knowledge about what is going on in her life. But one of the many things is that wherever she is, due to pandemic, there's not much socializing happening. And there is, therefore, there is not much oxytocin is being produced because not much socializing, friendly gathering to create that a tra a neurotransmitter and make her feel good and not many activities to make her feel she's making efforts towards certain accomplishments to make her feel good in the way of dopamine release. And so family already gives her that sort of a warmth and closeness to feel secure psychologically and physically secure. And all these non-activities that are happening around her, all these closures and all the fears and anxieties that have been created by all the media and whatever is happening in the world, obviously is going to make everybody depressed. So this is why it's very important for you guys to have something to do of interest that is productive or learning curve, something you want to research and learn these times that it will allow you to feel productive and making progress and to bring that hopefulness to create dopamine because of your activities toward accomplishing something, learning something and socializing with your family and friends, close friends circle to create that oxytocin as little even as possible. So naturally she is depressed uh, these things could have a effect on her decision and you know why not and perhaps she was counting on a relationship and that maybe has broken up and that was the only source of the oxytocin and um, the feelings of um, uh, gratitude or feelings of happiness or dopamine or activity so she feels lonely there so you know why not let her come home <clears throat> Just uh, no. <clears throat> All right. So, now we have <clears throat> Hawkeye, says 26 male Albania. Wow, Albania. I have <clears throat> I had a very good friends from Albania, and I haven't seen him for a long time, but... Uh, uh, very nice people, very, very close we used to be. Um, Hawkeye says, 26, male Albania. Hello, sir, why does it hurt so much after you break up on a long relationship, seven years, even after six months have passed? Well, I would be worried. If it didn't hurt, I'm not worried that it hurts. It's normal. It's supposed to hurt. You know, you establish emotions toward your loved ones. And it becomes part of your routine. So it's not just about 
the fact that you broke up with your girlfriend, with your relationship. It's about that something else is happening in there that you're not focusing on. You see, before you guys got together, you had a certain lifestyle. There were certain things that you were doing during the day called the mechanical process. Getting up, having your tea or coffee, going to school or going to work or whatever it was that you were doing, going to gym, meeting friends, when the world was normal. Whatever it was that you were doing, they were all called mechanical process, things that you were doing. And she had the same kind of stuff when you guys hadn't gotten together. And through those mechanical processes, the things that you were doing during your day, you would have created a certain rhythm, a routine. That routine became your order, order in life, your system, your order in life. And the mind finds its security in order of things. You see, mind is not like the body finding its security in physical environment. For example, if you want to see if you're fine, you check your cheeks, ears are here, arms are here, hands, legs. Okay, everything is intact and I'm here in my home, door is locked, I'm in a good part of town. So you feel safe because of the physical environment you need for your physical part of the entity to feel safe. But the mind is not a physical entity. Therefore, it doesn't find its security in the physicality, in the physical environment. It finds its security in the order of things. And those orders are created by the things you do and the things you're involved in. Hmm? So, when you guys were single, you had a certain mechanical processes, created a certain order, you had a certain kind of psychological security through the order, your mind would also relax and feel secure and occupied with that, that routine. When you guys got together, then you had a little bit of adjusting time. Your order was interfering with hers, and her order, way of life, was interfering with yours, and eventually you guys compromised, and you created a new order. A new certain things you were doing each, whether together or individually, but it was as a collective, and you texted each other, talked to each other, went to coffee, do things. And those became your coordinated mechanical processes, which together individually and the things you were doing together in share, uh, you know, uh, as a team, became your normal mechanical processes through which you created a new order. A combined, but a new order than how it used to be, how your lifestyle used to be, how your order of life used to be when you were single. So now seven years passed, this order is your order now. Now you broke it. Now you're not just missing her that you feel so much hurt. You have broken it. The, the order of your life, which was taking two people to create that order, is broken. That's why the order doesn't exist the way it used to. So the mind is now feeling insecure and agitated and not relaxed and not feeling that it has a foothold. Because the order is broken and the mind finds its security in order of things. And now the order is broken. So you're not just missing here, you're missing your order in life. This is why you keep going into the memory, because in the memory, that order, how things used to be, is there. So you keep going in the memory, and the more you stay in the memory, you more encouraging yourself to feel safe in the memory, and you don't want to come out. And it leads to depression, because you're not active in the reality and actuality of life. You're not involved with efforts that you make in the moment, in the present moment anymore. You have disconnected yourself with the actuality of life and you're seeking refuge in the memory because in the memory you have the memory of how things used to be, which is the order, and that is what the brain is missing and wants to feel secure. It keeps going in there and stays in there. And while staying there and feeling safe, who else do you see? You see your ex. 
So then you miss her because that everything is constantly roaming around how things used to be. So what you need to do is to get out, doing things that you need to do, start being active in the activities and in the efforts that you make in the present moment, which is the real life, because the memory is dead, doesn't exist. You just uh, keep re-watching uh, the old movie on your DVD. It's not a real theater. It's not in action. It's not being made. It was made and you keep watching the recording of it. That's why you go into the memory. It's not real life. You come back into a, the present moment and be active in whatever it is that you want to accomplish. And that activity brings you to new mechanical processes. It means new things that you will learn to do and you will like to do. You create new series of things that you want to do during your day. And through those new series of things that you want to do during your day, the mechanical processes, you create a new routine. When you create a new routine, eventually you have a new order. When you have the new order, the mind finds security in this new order and doesn't need to go into the memory anymore. And in the memory, you won't be meeting her. You won't be thinking that, oh, I miss her because you constantly be thinking of her because you're in the memory. You're in the memory for getting the order back. But in that process, you will also be constantly thinking about her, which again, keeps to do the rewiring of your brain that you can't get away from her because you're constantly thinking about her. Why you think about her? Because you're in the memory. Why you're in the memory? Because you're looking for the order. Because the brain, the mind, doesn't feel secure because the order is broken. And that's what's happening with you, which means you got to create a new order through new sets of mechanical processes, which means through new sets of things that you want to do and accomplish in life, which creates a whole new routine, new order, new psychological security, security for the mind, and you will go on. So hope that was helpful to you. And we have a super chat. We have a super chat from Jesse. My goodness, Jesse, where have you been? So it's just a treat for the new year. <laughs> Thank you for helping so many people still. You're quite welcome, Jesse, dear. I'm glad that you're here. You had the time to join us. Delighted to always hear from you. And thank you for your kind words and support the channel. And who do we have here? We have <clears throat> Major Paper says, Hi, Mehran, 25 uh, France. France, FR. That's France, isn't it? Hope you're doing good. Your videos about HOCD and intrusive thoughts have been incredibly helpful to me. I'm delighted to hear that. Now, I want to look up, I want to find 10 or 20 people who are suffering from OCD, HOCD in specific. And uh, I want to have a free Zoom chat with you guys. Because I want to introduce to you an experiment that I have tried. And I want to see how you guys um, feel about it and what kind of effects you get from it. And uh, nothing derogatory, nothing hurtful, nothing to do with any substance or anything. It's just the way of uh, thinking. And I want to see if you guys uh, concur with the results that I have received and uh, through this uh, mechanism or this um, type of thinking or procedure. And so whoever is interested, you may send me a note through the site. Go to my site, mindthatseekstruth.com, and there's a place where you can send a, an email. That's not a paid email or it's not a paid product. It's just a free email, I guess, you can send. Or you can simply write me to my email, mehran at mindthatseekstruth.com. Mehran at mindthatseekstruth.com. 
Uh, send me an email. Just please remember, this is not about sending questions to get answers. This is just about this particular request. Uh, there are other mechanisms on the site that you can send your questions, and there is a uh, there's you know things involved for that procedure. So you'll follow that. But this particular one is my request for 10 or 20 volunteers that would like to uh, understand uh, my way of describing um, how you can try to see what effects, what positive effects you get from this way of thinking uh, so you can, in regards to intrusive thoughts, um, any kind of intrusive thoughts, OCD, HOCD, uh, pedophile OCD, intrusive thoughts, things, thoughts that pop up in the head. So if you are interested, send me an email uh, with your emails and um, when I set it up uh, at a time that everybody could uh, join, maybe we'll cut it into two. If there are too many people, we'll have maybe 10 at one time, the one time zone, and then another 10 people, another time zone. So I do that program two times, and then we'll see. We'll see what you guys uh, have to say about it. So uh, where are we now? Ah, so it says, well, I hope you, okay, oh, great. Okay, good, good. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, Major Paper says, but I want to know how come these OCD thoughts are jumping from one to another and what's the best way to finish this habit of intrusive thoughts? Thanks in advance. Uh, the problem is that you, uh, Major Paper also says these thoughts are jumping from P-O-C-D, H-O-C-D, virus O-C-D, and all other things, disgusting. Okay, listen, these are, these are, you know, different kind of thoughts are disgusting to different kind of people, and then the same kind of thoughts may not be disgusting to other kind of people, and vice versa. So, the problem is that you actually think that... Um, OCD is one thing. It has many subsets. And it's a condition of not believing, wanting assurance, and doubting everything. And wants to indulge into search and engage data hunting and off in all facets and tangents and topics just because that malfunction of Doubting everything is creating your questions. You will doubt about everything. Uh, even the, I can, if I allow, if I pay attention, the brain's job is to protect me. To protect me, it always thinks negatively. So even comes to my mind that this tea I'm drinking, maybe the tea was laced with some virus when it was being harvested. I mean, all kinds of shit can come in here. But we have a system that disses and ignores all these intrusive thoughts because it's not going to act on every thought that shows up. Because if that was the case, we wouldn't be able to live. We wouldn't be able to go out of our home because there's always going to be anxiety for danger and survival. So I could be allowing to believe the negative thoughts that comes to mind when I want to drink my tea. What if uh, the person who was cutting the teas out of the tea bushes pissed on him? What if he went to the factory and there was some kind of a chemical thing in there? What if somebody put some, I don't know, hepatitis virus in it? I mean, it can be all kind of shit. But that is not realistic, is it? There are standards and observers and quality control and legal ramifications and responsibilities and standards all set in motion to make sure these things don't happen. So if I don't rely on that information and rely only on the suggestion of the brain, which is trying to protect me by all these negative thoughts, then I'll be doomed. I can't even walk out of my room because what if I think, oh, I shouldn't go out of my apartment because maybe somebody who had a um, uh, virus just coughed outside of my door five minutes ago and I didn't hear it. You know how far you can go? You can go nuts. You can go crazy. Because the brain, all it needs, it needs a stimulant. 
this whole thing that is happening, I don't know what it is. Whatever the hell it is, it's working with the way the brain is programmed. The brain is volatile and is designed to protect you. So constantly thinks negatively. So all it takes for you to break a suggestion of a negative connotation, negative action, a danger, and the brain takes on and goes to the rest. That's why when you have a thought, you're a heterosexual male, and a thought of homosexuality comes to your mind, that's all the brain says. says oh, see, I'm going to protect him. I'm going to make sure he's aware, alert of, about it, aware of it. I'm going to keep it in the mind. I'm going to keep repeating it so to make sure he protects himself because I consider that a danger for him. Because it's spawned in negativity, the brain. It is designed to be negative to protect you. Now, for someone who has got a different gender, a homosexual person, maybe the, his or her brain comes up with heterosexual thoughts that it thinks that is danger for them. So it keeps causing them to have these kind of intrusive thoughts that would be intrusive to them. The brain is designed to constantly go on negative tangents because that's the only way it knows how to alert someone to be more careful about him or herself. So what's happening in the world right now, it's hitting the right nerves, supposedly, so to speak, in the brain. And it's working with the brain to make us all crazy. Because we are very focused on survival and protecting ourselves. So if someone comes along, a friend of you comes and says, hey, don't eat in that area of town. There is some kind of a flu there or there's some kind of a uh, bug uh, in their food or whatever. Some kitchen is not clean. You will definitely not go there. So right now, what is happening with you in your brain is that, uh, what was the question? Where did I go with this? Ah, so, so that's why when you have some kind of an intrusive thought in regards to OCD, uh, in OCD subsets, it jumps around because it doesn't care about what topic it is. You see, OCD is not fact. HOCD is not truth about you. It's a brain's malfunction in the signaling system, so it comes up with these alerts. It's part of the OCD disorder. And it doesn't care what kind of OCD disorder it is. All it is involved in is in the disorder. So it can show itself up in washing hands OCD, checking the light switch 10 million times, touching it off and on OCD, watching the stove five million times before you want to leave your home, or locking the door five million times, or thinking about HOCD, thinking about maybe pedophile OCD, or thinking about religious OCD, or harm OCD, or responsibility OCD. All these OCDs, they all come because the disorder is about OCD, not the type of OCD. So it jumps from one to another because it's the same process. A negative opposite of what you are, what you think, what you prefer. That's the alarm that it uses to bring to your attention. Always opposite of what it is. That's what OCD nature is. It makes you think you got to touch that light switch five times. If you don't, your parents might something happen to them. And you do it, and then nothing happens to your parents. You say, ah, see, that's why nothing happened to my parents, because they touched that. Then you say, well, I know it's stupid. But you say, well, what does it harm? Well, it doesn't harm if it's five times. But when it gets to 10, 15, and it's not limited to the light switch, it's to touching that and touching that and touching that and doing this and putting this here five million times and checking it, then you start wasting your life and see the energy that you're actually burning out for nothing. So there is no specific question why it jumps from one OCD to another, because that's the nature of this OCD. OCD is pretty much like having OCD to have OCD. You will find other OCDs because that's the path the brain is tuned into, you know? It's a variation of, it's like you're learning how to play a sound, a song on your guitar. 
or on your piano. All you have to do is change one note and you have moved into same tune, a different variation. But the whole reason that the variation exists is because the main tune was played. So the whole reason that all these subsets, you jump around from OCD to OCD, different kind, is because the OCD is present, so it has different variations. And pretty much dealing with it is in the same way. So that's the good news. <laughs> One way to solve them all. All right. And I want to bring your attention, guys, uh, again, as I have often, uh, always, always mentioned that if somebody uh, called me a doctor or whatnot, I first thing I do, I say, please remember, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychotherapist, I'm not a psychologist, I don't have any medical credentials. These, what you hear me talk about, is based on my research of scholars of hundreds and hundreds of years ago, or the scholars of today in the modern science that I've learned and researched, and these are my personal understanding and uh, learning abilities and personal experiences and the things I have learned and pondered uh, through lifetime, through my lifetime, and written uh, articles or books or whatever about it. So understand, if you want to talk about uh, the science or medical things, you got to talk to your psychotherapist, psychologist, to your doctor, to your GP. Uh, so don't make a misunderstanding just because I know the thing or two that doesn't make me a doctor uh, so don't call me that when you comment or when you you know want to make an appointment because I will quickly correct you I don't want any misunderstanding anyhow having said that going to next Pranay says but my recovery is slow, but there's so, but there so lots of things. Good, as long as there's recovery, that's what you should focus on. Not how fast the recovery is. The fact that there is a recovery, meaning you're doing the things that have been advised to you by your doctor or your psychotherapist, or you've read and became knowledgeable about how to deal with this thing, and that is what you should focus on: recovery not how fast it is. These things are not, neuroplasticity is not gonna be quick. Because if that was the case, then the moment you play the piano and you played it good, then you would always be playing it good. No, if you don't play for a few days, again, you gotta catch up. And you remember when you do practice something like in piano or tennis or any uh, sports activities or any anything that you wanna be good at, such as dealing with OCD or HOCD, <clears throat> when you do the things that you're supposed to do in order to be good at something, the neuroplasticity doesn't happen right away as you're doing that activity. Neuroplasticity happens when you actually rest and the mind actually settles and then neuroplasticity takes place then when you're sleeping, when you're resting when you're not engaged with that activity. It doesn't happen when you're doing the activity. It sets it up. It's, it's, you, you've noticed this. When you study for your exams in high school or, or, or college or wherever it is, you will uh, burn a night, night candle and you study hard for a few days or a day or hours and hours and hours. And you're still not sure if you got it all. But about a day or two later, you remember everything perfectly. Everything is good, like you actually understand it. Why? Because all that repetition, all that learning, all that whatever it is, was it playing tennis? <clears throat> was it playing piano? You kept playing, 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 and you weren't satisfied. You're playing, playing, you, you didn't think you are that good. But the next day, when you play the same, within a couple of times, you say, wow, I'm better than yesterday. Because neuroplasticity takes place not when you're doing the thing, when you're resting after you've done the thing. That's why sleeping is very important. Remember that. So <clears throat> make your sleeping cycle correctly and 
keep on doing what it is that you're supposed to do when these intrusive thoughts shows up that we've talked about it and a repetitious of this continuous effort on that will eventually make you see that hey they don't show up that often but if you expect them not to show up right after you've done the you know the way you deal with these intrusive thoughts that, that's that's not the way it works you keep doing the work and then you get the results a little. Like any job you have, you do the work, you don't get paid right away, in most cases. In some cases you do. Uh, but if you're on salary, you do the work and at the end of the month you get the pay. There's a little bit of time lapse between getting the rewards of your labor. In here, the same. Uh, you do the work and practice and continuous adhering to what it is that you should be doing when the intrusive thoughts shows up, show up. And eventually, through time, and when you sleep and you rest, these will take place and starts changing what it's supposed to. Why? Well, as I said before, because it's neuroplasticity happens when the correction in the conditioning, which is between the design and the program of the neurons, <clears throat> takes place when you sleep. When you sleep, glial cells go and mark the synaptic neurons that are not being used and with the protein called CQ1 and those bridges will be destroyed when you sleep microglial cells go and find them and destroy them then no longer you have that plasticity that was created before you started rewiring yourself so in other words if you had a bad habit and when you focus on good habits and not using the bad habits anymore, the good habits will have the, neuro, will have the neurons to work for them. Neurons are going to be used to make you good at the good habits, and the neurons that were uh, being used for you to have the bad habits are not being used. They fall dormant. And because they're dormant, they're going to be marked and going to be destroyed. And that takes a bit of a time. So focus on that, and you will prevail in everything it is that you want to achieve in life. That is why the old saying, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything in life. And that is means repetitious of what you want to be good at, that's going to happen. But repetitious of what you don't want, and if you keep paying attention to it and repeating it and fussing with it, well, that's another way of actually rewiring and making your uh, synaptic neuron stronger in being good at what it is that you want to be bad at that you don't want to be good at. All right, if I haven't confused you enough, then let my, <laughs> let's, let's go forward. And Ria Chu says, 36 Philippines, just want to share, I had a happy three, year, three and a half years with my ex. Then COVID happened and forced us to be apart for 10 months. Finally, late November, I got to fly and see him after quarantine for two weeks. He was a stress at work for our first week together. We went away for Christmas holiday the next week and told me on Christmas Eve he was having a relationship with another woman. Oh, okay, his co-worker. She was married. Oh, well, okay. Our two weeks holiday were spent on, on and off fighting. That was awful. Came home 1st of January, and he said we should break up. I'm now back in my country in quarantine again. You can't write this up. You mean, what, what do you mean you can't write? You mean, it's, you're saying that this is true. Yeah, okay. He says, I know he's a good person deep inside. That's why I'm so blindsided. He seemed out of character. He said he's lost and not sure if love is enough for him. But he's interested to be with the same woman. I hope soon enough, oh, you're talking to Emmanuel, okay. 
All right. Well, the thing is, when you are in love or you think you're in love or somehow you're in a relationship, you somehow think everything about the other person is about logic. And that person is no longer a human being because you love that person. And because you're the most important person in your life, therefore what you love must be the most important thing in life, smartest and best quality and most understanding and most balanced and most logical and most faithful and most in everything. Why? Because it belongs to you. Because you have chosen him. Therefore, you are the best in the world that you think can think of. Everybody does. Everybody's the most important person in their own life. And because you're the most important person in your life, and that's how you think of yourself, then you think the one you've chosen is the most perfect one. Then you expect the most perfect responses towards life challenges and personal expectations or shortcomings. That's why you become devastated to think that he's been cheating or he's been with another woman and you were blindsided because you thought of him as perfect because you think of yourself perfect. Therefore, what you've chosen must be perfect. Therefore, it's unheard of that someone perfect could actually do these things like this and not understand the value of relationship and to let it go because you don't see him as a human being. He's a human being. He's got all the shortcomings that everybody else has. So he's been in quarantine. You've been in quarantine. You've been strong and you've been faithful and you've had different values for your relationship. So you didn't go out with anybody else. But some guy somewhere else who is thinking about him being a entity which has needs of eating, sleeping, and um, sexual activities and all the other things that a human being may need and cannot put priorities to the relationship versus his needs, he's going to go after pleasure. He's going to go after what keeps him sane. Because he doesn't have the capability of having enough faith in the future and in the relationship and willing to forego the uh, short-term challenges for the long-term benefit in the future. But he goes for the pleasures of immediate sense rather than waiting for when the world comes to be normal again. So he's basically following his animal instincts of, you know, taking care of himself however he can, rather than thinking about the relationship being the one that he should be supporting because he doesn't know what's going to happen. He wants that pleasure, that need now, which means his value for that relationship was not the same as your value for that relationship. That is why he broke it and he went for taking care of himself, the pleasure of this woman that he's found. That doesn't take anything away from you. It only reflects on his mannerism and mentality. It doesn't devaluate you. It only devaluates and shows the difference of his way of approaching this relationship in him. It is a reflection on him. It's devaluation on him, not yours. In fact, you couldn't have been better quality than the way you have resisted, handled, and endured these challenges, and you still stayed faithful to what you felt is important, your relationship. So nothing on you here. And good ridden. If the man cannot show resilience and uh, be able to be count on on hard times, how can you tell he's a real man then? He just showed that his preference is for his own pleasure of short term, that he actually has chosen the worst choice he could have, having a relationship with a married woman. Obviously, he's gone cuckoo, which means he's not the right candidate for you anymore. Maybe at one time he was. He's the kind of man that, in, you know, in light of uh, normalities and things being easy, he's a good man. But when things get tough, he's just going to fall apart. And he did. So which means it wouldn't have been a good candidate for you because life has lots of ups and downs. If this wasn't the down kind of thing, maybe sometime in your lives, you would find some other hardship. And he would fly the coop then. Gone. Or fall apart. So this, in fact, as hard as it is to imagine, 
and as painful as it is, it's a blessing in disguise for you that you actually got to know what the metal is made out of before you actually committed the rest of your life with. Uh, by the way, you haven't told us um, how old you are, or have you? Did I miss it? Because that's important for me to know when I'm talking to people. Um, so help me out with that. So um, nothing to worry about. I know it's hard because you've created your mechanical process and in fact your order through, uh, through together with him for the past uh, few years. But uh, this was a test and you should actually count your stars and you got to know this now then maybe some hardship and challenges that could come in life and it comes in everyone's life. So, I know that wasn't much of a help, but it's the truth and you should look at it this way. That's the fact. That's what's happening. And it's a fact that is not a, re a reflection on you. It's a reflection on him. And there's nothing that you are at fault here and there's nothing devaluating you even though you may think, oh, because he has chosen some other woman, therefore that woman is better than you. Bullshit. Bullshit. Because who is he that his choices would determine your value? He's just another human being, gets up in the morning, got to do his business and has his needs. Obviously, he's, got, uh, he's not strong-minded, who couldn't protect the uh, relationship, and he went for some real bad choice, a married woman of all things, and suddenly... You're thinking that, what, his choice would give you value or devalue you? If he chooses you, you're valuable. If he doesn't choose you, if he could choose, right, he would, you would see in, in his lifestyle. Obviously, he's incapable of choosing correctly. Therefore, never, ever, he could be having any say in your values, whether high or low, because that only has to do with you and not other people's choices affecting your values so having said that let's move on to I hope that was helpful to you and uh, opens up your your eyes and see how lucky you are in fact as challenging as the time is for you and uh, Abed Pollock no before that we have other people Okay. So with that, <clears throat> so. Ray Maxi says, I don't know what to do. I only see one way out to end the pain. Well, remember, what you see is only what you see, but not what's all out there to see. Imagine you're playing a chess, and you say, I give up. I don't have a way out. But there is a way out. You just can't see, you can't tell me your level of chess is the highest possible because when the level of chess playing goes higher, you will see things that you couldn't see and you were convinced that it doesn't exist. But another player with the higher ranking comes and sits on your chair in the same situation set up 
of the game that you gave up. You thought there is no way out because you couldn't see. And you said, what I can't see, therefore nothing exists beyond what I can see. But that's you, your ability. Your ability is limited at this time. Your expertise is limited in this game. So you're unable to see any further than what your ability can give you to see. But that doesn't mean there is nothing more there to be seen. Because if you get up and I come and sit down or somebody else comes sit down, I can see moves that you couldn't even see and you didn't consider at all. And you can win that game, but you're missing it. All because you're focusing on there is nothing I can do. The moment you say there's nothing I can do, then there's nothing you can do. Because that's what you brainwash yourself. I can't do it. Look, put your hand on your shoulder or on your thighs. Put your hand on your thighs. You know, I just make it here so you can see what I mean. But you can put your hand on your thighs. And think... My hand is stuck to my chest. Or my hand is stuck to my thighs. Let's the thighs. My hand is stuck to my thighs. My hand is stuck to my... And then imagine, strong screw between your hand and your thigh is stuck together and melted together. It's stuck. And then while you're thinking that way and imagining it that way, say, lift your hand. While you're thinking it's stuck, it's glued, it's one piece now. You can't take it off. Doesn't matter what you do, you can't take the hand off because you have believed that is a stuck, it's one piece, it's glued hard. That's the state of your mind. Brain is very powerful. When you command it and think it in a certain way, you will believe that your abilities are limited to the way that you're thinking. When you think in a certain way, you will believe that your ability is limited to the way you're thinking. That is what makes you think you can't see a way out. Because you have believed that your hand is stuck to your thigh and you can't move it. Now, believe it's not stuck. You don't have any pressure. All you do is just lift it. My hand is stuck here. It's one piece. It's part of my shoulder. I can't take it off. I can't. It's it's stuck. It's one piece. It's gone in there. It's one piece. Just uh, while I'm thinking that way, I can't take it off. Mind moves the body. Now, as soon as they say, no, they're two pieces. I can take it off. No big deal. Mind moves the body. So you think that way, then that's what you're going to believe. And how often do we need a reason to believe something? In many things in our life, we have believed in things that they were not true, but we believed them, and therefore, because we believed them, we thought they were true, but they were not. Because you decided that's how it's been, and you didn't look for any reason or any other solution. So you became the conclusion. You're not dealing with a situation right now. You have allowed yourself to turn the situation into a conclusion. Therefore, you cannot find a way out of a conclusion that you've already come to. I want you to go back. Paddle back. And peel back. Before you have made this to be a conclusion. Look at it as a temporary situation. And you will see that there are not even there lots of ways out. Often... You don't even care if there is a way out. You're just going to move on. Sometimes you can't fix something. When you can't fix it, you stop buying parts and trying to fiddle with it and repair it. You just say, can't be fixed, so I'm going to leave the car here. I'm going to move on, get a taxi, get a bus, or walk and go to another dealership, maybe buy another car. Otherwise, you... Expect this, that everything is permanent in this life. Therefore, if it's not working, I have to fix it. This idea of permanency is a problem. Everything in this life is something for us to learn. And everything in this life has a duration. 
but you don't seem to want to understand, most of us, that everything has a duration. We want everything to be permanent. And the funny enough, in the whole life itself, this journey that is a temporary, it's temporary enough. We don't have to make it more temporary. We don't have to do anything to ourselves. Uh, eventually, at some time, when the nature is called, well, the life ends anyhow. We don't need to rush that. Uh, let me just play my time, and that is in inevitable. I don't need to rush that part. I'm not for, for that at all. So the thing is, if this whole journey is temporary anyhow, so I don't need to make it more temporary. What I need to understand is that I'm trying to turn something permanent in a temporary setting. If the whole thing is temporary, why do you expect other things to be permanent? And then when they are not, you say, oh, no way out. I have to make my temporary life shorter. Why? How stupid is that? We are here, have an opportunity to play in this playground and learn something. And then when the time goes, comes, you know, whatever created us will take us away. And then we we'll don't know what's going to happen next. But that's another story for another time. But in the meantime, let's enjoy what the blessing we have. Instead of expecting so much that this has to be this way. If it's not, then I don't want to. Who the fuck do you think you are? That you're going to call this life and make it short because something is not going your way. Hmm? I don't know what's happening in your life. What I'm saying is, let's focus on the blessings that we have. Let's focus on the opportunity that we have. We're still here. As long as we're here, there is a way out. Sometimes the way out would be to leave it and move forward. Don't try to fix things. And do not uh, forego the idea that everything in this life has got a duration. A relationship, uh, eating your food will eventually finish. But if you keep eating, you're going to bloat up and just you know, get sick. So everything has a duration for some reason. Because that's our capacity. And that's... All there is good for it. So if something is not working, well, that's supposed to be the duration of it. And you're supposed to learn from it and move on. That's it. And grow and understand. I don't know what really is. Uh, I don't know if you lost a parent or if you lost a loved ones. Well, these are devastating times and I can't say much about it. We've all lost parents and loved ones and it's very, very difficult. But if you're talking about a relationship that you know, the girl left you or the guy left you, whatever it is that, uh, you know, your situation, I don't know if, what your gender is. Well, so what? Another relationship. Life is not summed up in one person or one relationship. And if you want to sum it up that way, that's a disrespect to the chance that you've given by the nature, by universe, by your God, by your creator to be here. Because for you to be here... 300 other million, 300 million other sperms were sacrificed. When your mom and dad were became, you know, friendly, there were another 300 million chances other than you to become you in this world. But you prevailed. So to begin with, you're the winner. You were the chosen one. And 300 million other possibilities were sacrificed for you to experience this life. And now you want to, you know, devaluate de de it just like because something didn't go well. I have no way out. Okay. I think it's time for you to count your blessings. Appreciate the fact there's always a move out there. And if you can't see, it doesn't mean it's not there. Just open your eyes. And sometimes you just walk away and start a new game. And that's the ticket. Hope that would be helpful to you and always appreciate life. There's so many people depend on you, whether you know them or not. You may not even know who they are across the world, but their life depends on your activity in this side of the world. Every one of us affect each other wherever we are in any part of the world. So don't ever think that you're useless or you've got no use. We all depend on, we are all, all like a puzzle. You have created a certain part in this world, in this whole picture. And your contribution, even just by getting up, going, getting coffee or a pastry for yourself or buy food to eat, you are affecting other people's lives in all corners of the world. We all need you and you need us. We're all together. So there is no way to say there is no way out. The way out is to focus on the fact that how needed you are, how important you are to the rest of us in the world whether you know us or not.
All right, let's go on to 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 do 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 do. Let's see. Lamis says hello, twenty-five male Lithuania. Hello there. And Kaya says stupid brain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Ritika says. Hi, sir. I am Ritika from India. What a beautiful name, Ritika. I am felt depressed a lot of time. Please give me a solution of my problems to remove negative thoughts. Oh, I just talked about it for the past an hour. Or so, so when it re-uploads, you can watch this whole thing, and there's so many little things that I've said are long things I've said that could be of help to you Ritika dear and also you can go on my you know YouTube channel there's lots of uh, videos just put in anxiety or depression or negative thoughts or intrusive thoughts and you will have lots of things coming which I would hope that would be helpful to you um, and Abid Paul, look, hey guys, have you been promoting this channel or not? I mean, you're here just for, you know, a tea and coffee and pastry. That's not good. <laughs> you got to do something for this channel. I want to be able to reach more people, help more people, because as you can see, the content in this channel is not like many other channels that exist. It's different. It's a different content and it's very helpful and positive in helping people deal with their mental issues, emotional issues, and understand their psyche better. And that is the key to be able to understand our psyche and the movement of the mind. And that's what we talk about here. So I want you guys to promote this channel on your social media, however you can, to let people know that solutions exist, supports exist for your breakups, for your some mental issues, for understanding your psyche for the negative and intrusive thoughts kind of things and all that would help the channel to reach more people and help more people so i'm going to put here a short video that you guys can simply copy and paste and put it in your social media to let people know that we do have a live streaming happening and uh, that's my email here and this is my this is the this is the um, what is it the um, the, the 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 promotional thing that you can put on your social media and let people know that we have a live stream and that would help the channel to be to get some exposure because obviously we are lost in the sea of the. Uh, uh, I don't understand. How could this be 128,000 view? It's a two minute thing. What is this that it's got 128,000 views? I don't get it. Hang on guys. I'm on to something. One moment. Oh, okay. So what is it unlisted? Hmm, I don't hear it. Right, maybe I'll check it out later and see what it is. So in the meantime, I hope that was helpful to you and you would use it to promote the channel. So let's go back to see. Where was I? Hmm. 
Johnny Cam says, thank you for, for the advice, Mehran. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for always taking time for us. My pleasure. And I know it's not nice what I'm about to say, but then if I'm doing nice things for you guys, you think, you say, then please help me out. Use that 1 minute 47 seconds video that I just shared with you guys on your social media. Promote this talk and chat lines about this channel, what it does, the live streams, the videos, the topics that we discuss, and promote this channel. Guys, we're going to disappear. If this channel doesn't get up, I've seen people come on, uh, come on uh, YouTube just about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. They started with about uh, 20 some odd thousand, like they were famous somehow, and quickly they got uh, 20,000. And now, four weeks later, they're up to 70 some odd thousand. And I have been around for what, six, seven years, and we are hovering around 22,000. That means, unless we are famous to begin with, we will be lost in sea of channels and it would be hard to move on, especially on topics like mine, which are not bullshit topics of, oh, here, get your ex back and do this text and do this and the, all the nonsense. We're talking about substance of understanding your psyche and become the master of your own domain, become the mechanic of your own machine and to be able to direct yourself and guide yourself through the challenges of life, including the mental health as much as possibly I can share with you. So it means I need your help. God damn it, get on with it, guys. Do whatever it is that you do in your social media. Promote the channel, one minute and 47 seconds. Not big deal, is it? All right. Let's go to Abid Pulak says, I tried to stop, but it's not stopping because it doesn't stop by itself. you got to be patient and recondition yourself. Please tell me how do I stop it. It's really embarrassing. What? Oh, here it is. Abit Pollock says, Mail 23, Bangladesh. I get a vaginal image of almost every woman, even child, I see which is harming my view on women. I don't want to see a woman with her vaginal structure coming in my mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, look, lots of things come into our mind, but you don't have an obligation to consider them that's the way the fact of things are or that they should stay in your mind or you should pay attention, try to destroy them. Oh, no, don't be here. You shouldn't be here. And you're trying to resist and put this out. Look, it's like a, a river. In the river, there's so many molecules of water, but none of them stay. They come, and as long as you don't stop them, as long as you don't try to resist them, to put a barrier in front of them so they won't come, if you don't do that, they'll just come and go. But your problem is that you want to stop them from showing up. Well, it's a river. It's got lots of water molecules and lots of debris and lots of pieces of leaves and things that it brings with itself. Let it pass instead of holding it, trying to get it out, out of the river. Should be pristine water. No, this is life. The river comes with all its shit and debris and stuff and molecules of water and, and also the debris that it carries. That's called the river. This is life. And that's the thought process in the brain. It has all kind of shit, garbage, and good stuff all together. It flows through. You only pick the ones that you need. So in other words, a woman shows up and you see a vagina, don't worry about it. Let it be. You focus on the communication you want to have. You focus on the value you have for that woman. You focus on what wonderful thing you like about that woman. And you focus on whatever it is that you're supposed to be focusing on. That's why you're there to deal with. And let the other images come and go. Doesn't matter. Don't recognize. Don't 
take notice of them more than noticing that they showed up. In other words, an intrusive thought, an image or thought shows up, you notice that they, they're here and then call them for what they are. They're intrusive thoughts, not me. That's not me. That's OCD. That's not me. That's the brain. That's all. When you notice them for, uh, as they arrive, they pop up, and then call them for what they are, that's my brain. It's not me. It's intrusive thought. It's not me. And that's it. Then you go on focusing on whatever it is that you want to focus. And this picture of the vagina, whatever it is in the background, don't worry about it. It's like a newscaster who's trying to tell you the news of the world. And instead of you focusing on the news of the world, you're focusing on the picture in the background, which happens to be vagina. That's all right. But focus on the fact that the background picture is not what you want to focus on. Let it be there. You're trying to get the background picture out in order to understand what she's saying. You don't need to. Let the background picture be. Just focus on the newscaster, what he or she is talking about. So when the images of this sort shows up, notice what they are. Okay, that's something that shouldn't be here, but it's here. And call it for what it is. That's an intrusive thought. That's a background. Not the main event. And then focus on what it is that you're supposed to do. Focus on what the newscaster is saying. That's all. You keep doing that. That rewires your brain. After a while, you don't even notice the vagina in the background of the newscaster. You're only actually hearing and seeing the newscaster. And you get used to the fact that, okay, that picture is there. Okay, fine. All right. But if your attention goes to the picture, oh, it shouldn't be here. Oh, it's bad. Or then you're not really with the actual actuality of life and what it is that you're trying to accomplish and your focus will go there and make that background picture even the main event, which is not. So focus on what it is that you should be focusing and in time it will disappear by itself. Background is background. So many backgrounds. You walk in the street, there's so many people doing weird things, but they're there. You allow them to be there because you're focused on your things. It's okay, none of my business. Okay, whatever the hell they're doing, they're doing. But you keep on going about your business. Same thing. And the brain is the same thing. A background shows up, an image shows up, let it be there. Uh, but you don't have to pay attention to it. You just say, okay, I can see that. And just like I see what garbage is going on in the street, what other people are involved in doing, which is of not, not your liking or your, your, uh, your, your approval, then what do you do? You just focus on other things. Same thing, but let them be there. You don't have to destroy or call the police, come and take them away because it's no, you just move about your own business. Same thing here. The picture you see a woman, a vagina shows up in your in your head. Okay, understand that this is what it is, but focus on what it is you want to accomplish. Proper behavior, proper mode, proper talking, and rewire yourself through this behavior and also ignoring the background picture and consider it as only that background picture. That's it. You don't have to worry about it. No, no, it's not being pervert at all. This is a condition that many, many people find it, especially when their mind is overactive. You have a very smart, intelligent brain. You, uh, I'm sorry, brain is not intelligent. You have a very smart, intelligent, you're a smart and intelligent person. And for that reason, you pay attention to many details stuff. And you have an imaginative uh, brain. Uh, so it's over-functioning it. It's, um, its capabilities are way beyond necessary at the moment. But the good thing about it is people like you are inventors. They come up with products and designs and technology and uh, drawings and accomplishments that is not ordinary. They're special. Nikola Tesla had severe OCD problems. And Nikola Tesla is the world most important inventor of all times so far. And he had all kinds of mental OCD and physical OCD. He would be sitting on a dinner table with the um, uh, owner of the Westinghouse 
uh, for the design of the um, alternative uh, um, current for Niagara Falls electrical uh, station. And he would be asking uh, 24 different napkins and cleaning everything and wiping once and then another napkin and cleaning this and every uh, piece of piece of food <laughs> piece of piece of food he would take he would do some ritual of putting the napkin here and so on that was just a small thing about it then he had flashes in the mind and all kinds of stuff but he's the most brilliant mind of all times and his inventions still rule the world so that's the good news about people with OCD like many of us. And everybody in this life has some kind of OCD. If they don't, they will. And the intrusive thoughts, every single human being on earth has intrusive thoughts of the kind that you so said and many worse. But they're just thoughts. Let them be. Move on and do your stuff according to your preferences and your decisions and your standards and these things can show up it's all right um jeffrey skelton is here says hi i'm iran jeff mail 33 toronto oh, good of you to join us we have uh, abid pollock so we, we did that we did that we did that Chester is here from Hawaii. This is mail 27, Oahu, Hawaii. Aloha, Mehran. Aloha, dear. Aloha. Aloha, Chester. Good to see you here. I mean, good to hear from you here. Hawaii. Hawaii is the is my home. <laughs> so sorry I can't be on your live stream right now. I'm currently at work at this moment. I will try and make it to your other live stream later on. Hope you're doing good. Thank you very much for stopping by and saying hello and extending key to us and I appreciate it and hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in about seven or eight hours hopefully and um Luna says salam Iran John Kefik Alyum Luna John hello to you as well and shukran tamam <laughs> Kay says all heartbroken lovers I wish you happiness and love within yourselves if you are happy and loving by your own nature no one can break your heart yeah okay but you know heart will mend when it breaks these things are part of life and we welcome them because unless we go through several different heartbreaking situations we won't actually find the one that we've been looking for because definitely the one that is a heartbreak and it's a broken relationship is not the one that we've been looking for so that's the plus about it you're looking for the one that doesn't break. So the one that breaks, that means it's already out of the equation and you're focusing and continue on to find the one that you are actually pursuing. And um, Evolved says, hello, man. First of all, God bless to have you on earth helping people. I truly appreciate your channel and advices you give. I struggle with arguing, fighting with my own thoughts. Any solution? Thank you. Yes. I've discussed it on, throughout this uh, video. I think by the time I got to your question, you've already gotten your answer. So, uh, and I thank you very much for your kind words and delighted that the channel is helpful to you. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, guys, uh, I'm looking for 10 or 20 people to have it in one or two uh, setting of uh, Zoom uh, to try some uh, experiment for dealing with intrusive thoughts uh, and see to how many of you it works and helps you. And that would be free because I'm trying to see uh, what kind of a result it gives and if it's the same results. Uh, it seems to be giving uh, to the ones that I have explained it to. And so write me uh, your email if you're interested, and I will uh, set up the um, time and day, and then we'll have uh, something like maybe half an hour um, discussion on this, and um, 
uh, I will let you know what I think and what I've conjured up and if that would be something that you want to try there's no substance or medicine or supplement or anything involved in this experience all about the way you think and I hope that would help with in managing intrusive thoughts and uh, all other kinds of subsets of OCD thoughts. Um, it's an experiment that we want to see how many people get good results. Many have, so I want to see how many more. Sarah Plocher says, thank you. You're welcome, Sarah. Did you have a question? Or are you just kind to thank me? Aman Gadpal says, 19 male India. Says, when I watched Bohemian Rhapsody movie, where from my HOCD was started, I saw the behavior and physical appearance of the actor who played Freddie Mercury and Freddie Mercury had the same gestures. When my HOCD started to increase my urges and behavior automatically, uh, uh, urges and behavior automatically kicked in the behavior and physical appearance same and exact as Freddie Mercury. Is it that stuck sound syndrome thing? Am I getting wrong signaling? Yeah, you're impressionable and um, you think if you f mimic a certain kind of a behavior, that you see in a movie or wherever it is that you see that you have to do it because you feel it's cowardly if you don't do it because it came to your thoughts so you should do it because you're not afraid you're strong and then you do it and then you question why did i do it that means i have a certain kind of a inclination or interest other than what my usual interest or inclination is then you start hunting these questions, data hunting, and discussing this inwardly. And um, especially when these sort of thoughts are triggered to you by people who are famous and successful, it gives you a certain kind of a doubt about you because it comes from a successful and powerful uh, points as a point of reference. And then you kind of have a hard time sticking with what it is meaningful to you and you become more of a uh, subject to be influenced by what it is that you're watching. If it's a suggestion, if it's a movie, if, it's, if there are people's um, behavior or lifestyle, uh, it is set in a certain setting that it could become an influential thing to someone who has an OCD like you or is uh, doubting everything and that would not be the right environment for you to nurture yourself back to where it is that you want to be. People have different lifestyles and to some people one is the right one and the, uh, to same other people that same lifestyle is not the uh, preferred one. So you got to protect your lifestyle, what it is that it works for you, rather than uh, taking uh, cues for people who prefer a different lifestyle. So everyone has their own path in this life, and you need to uh, base your life to protect your values, what's meaningful to you, what your choices are, and what your vetoes are. The power in you is not about thoughts or suggestion. The power is within your veto power and choices. When you stick with that, then nothing that you don't want will influence you ever because you are aware that you are defined 
by your vetoes and your choices, not by your thoughts, suggestions, or what tries to influence you in the world as a whole in general. All right. Team Forward says, no matter how hard I try, I still have feelings for the girl I've always loved. What can I do? Nothing. Have feeling for her. For her. What's wrong with that? Understand that you can have feeling for many things, but that doesn't mean just because you have feeling for them, they should have the same feeling for you. You should allow that. You walk in some kind of, I don't know, a horse track, and you see a beautiful horse, and you just fall in love with this. I wish I had this horse. I wish I could ride this. This is my beautiful horse. I love this horse. Look at the way this horse looks. Look at the whole setup. And this is what I want for the kind of a riding that I want to do. Dressage or equestrian and you're jumping and all that. But that doesn't mean that you can have that horse because you just love that horse. But it's okay to love that horse. You see a mansion, you say, oh, I love this mansion. I want this to be my home. Oh, you can't be crying about it. Yeah, you can enjoy that. That's good feeling. Every time you pass by, you say, oh, it's a great home. I love this home. It's no problem. But expecting because you love something, it also becomes part of your belongings or associate with you in, in the way you want it to. That's, that's not normal. I mean, not normal. It is normal, but it's not healthy. It's not logical. It's not logical. So, continue liking here, no problem. But open your eyes to the ones who are available to love you back, because that's where the whole thing is located. Not about you just loving one side. It's about you loving and she loving back. Then you got it. That's the match. Otherwise, it's just half. It's like buying a lottery ticket and say, I got the lottery ticket. I bought it. Yeah, well, that's half of it. You bought it, but the other half is when that number falls into, when they, you know, draw it, it'll be the numbers you have on it. So they will match. Then you got the win. Otherwise, buying lottery doesn't make you the owner of that prize. It's just half of it. It's a good step forward. So you like this girl, it's a good step forward. But if she doesn't love you back or like you back, it's not interested, well, that's the end of that experience. That's it. You move on. You recognize that, and you can still love her or like her, whatever it is, but you move on and allow other people to enjoy your presence and feel your care and love and attention and see what they reciprocate with because then it's far more valuable than the one that you just keep giving the love and nothing give back. It's like you keep putting your you know, coin into the meter and it doesn't change. You still say zero parking minutes. <laughs> or you put it in the phone, the old phones, you have to put money in it. You keep putting money in, so it says zero minute left, no good. So you walk on that phone booth, you walk on that parking meter, you walk on that possibility of an interest in that girl and go on, find another. That's how you deal with it. Otherwise, you want to keep being in there, it's your choice. You're not going to get anywhere. You don't want to be in a boat when there's no water and you keep rowing. So I don't go anywhere because you're on the ground. You're on the hard ground. You're on the dry land. Get in the water and then it will work. So you love someone who doesn't love you back, you're on your, you know, rowing on the dry land. Get in the water so you can go somewhere, meet different islands and see, wow, how many hulas. All right. <laughs> okay. Ritika says, sir, how to change mind thinking pattern and how to be happy all the time and how to break bad habit of negative thoughts. Well, this is a whole, uh, you know, a week of discussion. And I have all those videos, how to delete your memory, how to be happy, just put happiness or happy in the search engine of my channel put the delete memory or memory in search engine of my channel. And um, 
negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts, HOCD, OCD thoughts, um, put it in the search engine of my channel. All these videos come and you'll have as many videos as you want. We have over 2,000 videos on this channel, guys. Pretty much everything, and plus another six or 700 live streams that each of them are anywhere from two to five hours or one to five hours. So you have all these. If you really want looking for something, it's all in there. So search for them because I can't really go on on a, a you know individual basis to repeat whatever I've said here or in the videos and so on. And Ria says 36. Okay, thank you for that. Well, you just did spring chicken. So go on, open your eyes for more available and uh, qualified candidates. Uh, definitely the one who's not, uh, you know, reciprocating your feelings is not qualified. So unqualify that person and move on. That's it. You unqualify him. Don't wait to, for him to come back or say anything. No, he messed up. He, knows, he's not, he doesn't deserve your attention anymore. That's the end of it. Let it go. Rogara says, thank you for your videos. They are helping me get better. Good. Glad to hear that. Don't forget, I need you guys to share that video clip of 1 minute 47 seconds that I put up. The link down here to on your social media. Help the channel grow. Nobody knows about us. This is preposterous to so have 16 people or 22 people here after one week of not having live stream because obviously you guys are intelligent. You are here. You can see the channel has great com content, but we are not known. We don't have exposure. So expose the channel. Let it, I don't know, talk to people who you know in radio, television, or wherever, uh, publications, and get them to write something about it, say something about it, or you on your chat lines or whatever, Reddit or whatever, you do something. <laughs> I'm doing whatever I can. And 00ABS00 says, I'm 32 years old, and seven months ago, I broke up with my GF which was long distance and I was doing perfectly fine, but we started dating since February 2019. Now that she's seeing someone, I suddenly miss her. I don't get it. Seven months ago, you broke up, which was a long distance and I was doing perfectly fine after broke up, you mean, okay. Yeah, well, she's now going somewhere because just as soon as somebody puts, uh, selects something that you actually didn't care anymore, suddenly you think, oh, it's valuable. Why? Because somebody else has chosen it. And you give value to that person's choice rather than to the choice itself. You see, you're walking in a shop and you want to buy a jacket. And you see a bunch of them and there is one, eh, it's okay, but no, it's not your type. The design or the fabric or the something about it, you don't think it's right for you. So you leave it. But as soon as somebody else comes and says, oh, that's beautiful, I like it, and wants to take it, oh, I wanted it, I want No, you didn't. It's just that you're weak-minded. That somebody else wants something that you actually didn't want because if you wanted it, you would have, you know, kept it. And you somehow, you think because somebody else has chosen it, there's value in his choice because you think that person is better than you. Why? If you think about it, it's not because she's changed from a few months ago when you didn't care and you were fine. She's the same person. But now somebody else is choosing her. You think, well, because somebody else is wanting it, then she must be better than what I think she is. That I should want her too. And at the same time, because she used to be with you, so you have this kind of a possessive or, you know, feeling towards her, and you feel like her breaking up with you and now being available to somebody else in a relationship, that means you're not as good at that as somebody else. That's bullshit. It's got nothing to do with that. It just means you have to unwant her. You have to make sure you understand that that wasn't a healthy relationship. That wasn't a relationship. A long distance relationship is bullshit. Unless you guys been together, then you went on some kind of adventure or study or job or whatever, and you have plans to visit each other or come back to each other. That's the different 
situation. It started as a real relationship. But if you start a relationship to begin with, long distance, it's bullshit. It's just delaying the inevitable, which either one of you could find somebody local and eventually gravitate toward that person because you have body and mind. Mentally, you're satisfying each other by saying, oh, how are you, darling? I missed you. I had a good day. This and that. What did you do? And for an hour, you chat and that's it. But then your physical entity portion of your being is still in need of intimacy, uh, socializing. And that cannot be done through long distance. So long distance is 90% of the cases, if not more, is doomed if it didn't start with actual physical relationship. And even so, after a while, being long distance, you still start wanting to be one with life and be able to have some companion that can be there for you if you need to, either one of you. So naturally, a long distance relationship is doomed to begin with. It may last for about a year, but eventually, you know, there's no end in sight and you guys will do what your nature wants to do, which is uh, have some kind of a structure in life. For that, you want to choose a partner and that partner should be available and accessible and that cannot be through virtual bullshit. So, because our entity is not uh, just uh, mental, it's mind and body. So mind has rules and body has rules. Both have to be satisfied. You can't satisfy both through virtual uh, reality relationship. And at the same time, if you're physically together and your minds, you can't bind, bond on consciousness level, your minds and mentality is different, it's also doomed. So it has to be a combination of understanding and, and bonding and matching. So how come you accept the fact that you're not good together when you're physically in the same town and you're not um, compatible, you accept that, and you separate. Say, so, yeah, you know, we were physically together, we had good sex and all, but we were not compatible, not the same kind of a mentality. And you accept that. But when you are long distance, you have no physical connections, uh, interaction, and you're just mentally satisfied, uh, you expect it to last, and you expect it to be a good match? How? How do you know how you guys react physically toward each other? You don't have that experience, but you need that experience. It's missing. So when it's missing, it's not going to work. Eventually going to, you know, you can hold for a while, but eventually going to give up. It's like a tire in the car that is not really right size, or it's not really, you know, uh, lots of threads. And eventually it stops holding the air. It goes flat or tears apart. It can hold the weight for a while. Almost every situation is fresh, is new, is is is, um, uh, you know, noble, what is it, novel, and, uh, you know, keeps it together. But after a while, it's no novelty anymore. How, how far can you actually mentally communicate and satisfy each other? Eventually, you want that physical part, which is part of your being. So it has to be a combination, mind and body in a relationship, both. So it's doomed to begin with. Don't have long-distance relationship. It's bullshit, most of the cases. Yeah, there we go. You already broke up due to lack of feelings and communication, but now somebody else wants her. You say, oh, yeah, because it's just a feeling of, uh, this is my bicycle, nobody else rides it. It's mine. You haven't been riding it, and it's been, you know, uh, rusting away on the backyard. But now that somebody wants to buy it, or somebody wants to ride it, somebody wants to whatever, oh, no, no, it's mine, it's mine. It's the way we are. We want to protect what is ours. And I don't mean to use bicycle as any derogatory uh, example. It's just what came to mind because it's a good example. And also because my bicycle is right in front of my eyes. <laughs> my favorite bike. I love that bike. <laughs> and when you start talking to your bike, it's, some, it's, it's time to see somebody because it means pandemic is really getting to all of us. Talk to the walls, talk to the bike. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how we roll. We are men. We are women. We are human beings. We are resilient. And um, 
And he says, is it love? No, it's not. It's just lust and possessiveness and trying to keep the old order that you were used to it. It's mine. So don't worry about it. Uh, or just ego after I know she's seeing something. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. He says, if you know it, God damn it, why you waste my time here? <laughs> and Tree Tucker says, can't stop thinking about my narcissistic ex. Well, what do you want me to say? You say narcissistic ex and I can't think of her in the same sentence. That means you've got to see somebody. <laughs> Convince yourself to, come, to become reasonable. That discarded me on Christmas, discarded you. Why you talk like that about yourself? Nobody dares to discard you. It was an asshole and narcissistic and you what? Because you want sex from her. That's probably what it is, right? Now she's on social media slandering me while living her best life. You think she's living her best life. If she was living her best life, she would be slandering you. She's actually living her lowest life. That's why she thinks she has to slander you to feel good and high and mighty. Because when you ask someone, you know, not someone, but there's two ways to have the tallest building in town. One is to destroy all other buildings. Then yours will look taller, no matter how tall it is or how short it is, because you're focused on destroying other buildings. The other way is to keep building your own. She doesn't have the capability or talent or sophistication or ability or smarts or intelligence to build her own. She can only do one thing, try to get have the tallest building or to feel high and mighty, or feel good, have a good life, by trying to trash you. That is a deficiency in her, not a quality. She's fucked up. And you be lucky that you're not in that relationship anymore. And don't be stupid saying that you miss your narcissistic bullshit. If that's what you miss, then that's what you deserve. If you don't respect yourself, nobody else will. So start from respecting yourself and don't give a shit about what she says about you. You set your life as best as you wish to set it, and that's how it's going to be, not about what she says your life is. And um, Rhea Chu said, thank you so much, Mehran. That hurt, but you were right. He choked and he choked and showed himself as weak. I don't think I'm attracted to people like that. I'm Filipino and we are resilient. And this is to, this too shall pass. Yes, that's my girl. That's the way you should think. Yes, that's correct. And Tucker says, I took her back 21 times. Uh-oh, you shouldn't have. Tucker says she created a fight and disrespected me to make me ask her to leave. I emailed her a question of why she did all this and no answer. Still five weeks ago. Because you are showing her that you're weak. You're actually asking explanation from an asshole. She has played you and make you think you're inferior by constantly complain about you and saying that you're not good enough, playing on your psyche until you believe you're not good enough, then you start constantly doing whatever the shit she wants in order to prove to her that you're good enough because she made you feel you're not good enough and you think you got to prove to her. You prove nothing to her. She's a fucking piece of nothing and that's what you should not fall for. And if you fall for it, it's on you. You got to see it that is a narcissist, and a narcissist tries to play with your psyche. They make you feel nothing by bashing you, beating you down, always dissatisfied, never happy, never think you're good enough, and constantly telling you you're not good enough in order to make you feel not good enough to serve them, to turn you into a slave. That is one thing you should be clear about and understand to protect yourself. And with these kind of snakes, you want to have nothing to do with them. They're sick. Simply, a narcissist person is sick, is mentally ill, and you got to move away from them. That's the best way. So go and celebrate, and don't wait for her respond. Uh, she's not worth uh, your one second of thinking. And until you respect yourself, this will continue. So 
I hope you will change that. We have a um, super chat from Jeremy Bailey, two pounds. And thank you for that, Jeremy. But where is your question? Oh, there it is. Jeremy says, hey, thanks for taking the time to make the videos and helping others. You're quite welcome. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, Consciousness Motivation says, Mail 24 Sweden. Mehran, how are you, sir? Would you be interested in joining a podcast? I tried sending you an email but did not receive an answer, so I try here. Hello. Uh, um, what's your name? Oh, you, there's no name. Uh, Conscious Motivation. <laughs> yes, I saw your email. I apologize for not having responded. I, I actually wanted to respond to you and uh, but however it was very busy time on different tangents uh, personal and uh, business and more business and other concerns and things that is going around uh, going in life so i couldn't respond to you i apologize for that however the conscious motivations i watched uh, you know I, I don't think at this time uh, as much as i appreciate the invitation as much as i appreciate the invitation. Did I say as much as I appreciate it? As much as I appreciate the invitation, I just don't think uh, at this time uh, your podcast is going to help, you know, this channel much. Uh, but I would be more than happy once you got numbers up to be part of your podcast. Um, Anyhow, I, 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 I salute your efforts, and I know that you're going to make it big eventually, but at this time, it wouldn't serve me the best use of my time, um, because if you look at your podcast numbers, you will see it wouldn't be much helpful to me at the time. Uh, and uh, so I apologize. I don't mean to be rude or mean. You understand that. It's just that there's so many other things I'm trying to put together, and it's not just about that I have nothing else to do but this. There's so many things that takes my time, consultations and appointments that I have and other businesses. So I, I like to, like, you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't want to say anything negative because I really appreciate it and I know it's, it's a good cause, good thing. But the numbers are not there. When the numbers are up, you know, tag me again. I'd be more than happy to, by all means. Um, the Tucker says, okay, that hurts, this hurts someone, no, it shouldn't hurt, you're causing your own hurt, you should be strong enough and recognize that these people don't worth your attention, look, whoever is not paying attention to you does not deserve your attention, simple, very simple, change your thoughts, change your mood, Change your thoughts, change your feelings. You think of her highly, think of her lowly. <laughs> think of her what she's all about. She's about to this, she's trying to chisel you down in order to make herself look big. On her own, she can't look big. She doesn't know how. That's the only thing she knows. Hit you on the head so you think, oh, I got to do more for her to be pleased so she will be pleased. So it will be worthwhile because you're hanging around waiting for her to tell you if you're worthy or not. Because you haven't figured out that you're worthy and you don't need her to tell you this way or that way. You are your own man. And go on, make your life. You don't need her affirmation or approval. And that's what you've been conditioned to. And get out of that, you'll be fine. And... Uh, Jeremy Bailey says, Mail 37 UK. Thank you for that, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Very kind of you. Uh, guys, it looks like we are 2 hours and 15 minutes and 27 um, seconds, 30 seconds, and it's going on, continues on, onwards. Uh, and we have uh, answered all the questions. There are no more questions here. So at this time, it's time for me to say we'll have another live talk uh, tonight at 8.30 or 9 p.m. 8.30 or 9 p.m. I'm not sure which one. Depends on how soon I finish my stuff. And that would be geared for an Asian countries and Australia, which this is supposedly for North America and Europe, but the title is wrong. That's okay. <laughs> and so, um, and uh, let me see if I can... Uh, 
fix that up for North America. And Europe. All right. All right. So, um, and if if I couldn't meet you there tonight, then uh, next week, Saturday, one p.m. Vancouver time, and also nine p.m. Vancouver time. Every week, as much as possibly I can, unless somehow for some reason I can't. Otherwise, every Saturday, 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. Vancouver time, we'll have a live stream where you can join in and ask your questions and concerns, and I'll be more than happy to explore it with you. And if you wanted to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype, go on my site, mindatseekstruth.com, and make an appointment, and for newcomers, I usually add extra time beyond what they have booked for, so we'll get acquainted and have a good enough time to explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. So, in the meantime, I love you all. Thank you very much for being here, giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you, and I look forward to talking to you soon. In the meantime, be good to yourself, to the others. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now. All right. <clears throat>